Hey. Hi guys. Well, it is pouring rain here today. Gosh, <laughs> right? Pitch, I want, I, no offense, I love you guys, but I kind of want to be in PJs. I know. With like a tea, I know. And a snuggly blanket and Sophie on the couch it watching the rain. It is crazy, this rain. Um, so yeah, we're taping this on a day that has been raining for like two weeks solid in oh South Florida. <laughs> So we're like, can we talk about something happy? Yeah. I don't live um, in Seattle for a reason. Right? Exactly. I'm not it. it feels like Seattle. It does. So today we wanted to talk about something that actually came up in our last um, our last topic, which was talking about um, in relationships uh, the wounding that causes you to either be a um, a clinger. Mm -hmm. Or a runner. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the relationship. Depending on the relationship. Because, you know, you I can think switch it. in our relationship, you think I'm the runner. But in reality, in some relationships, I've been the clinger. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So, well, I'm definitely, in our relationship, more probably more clingy. Mm -hmm. And so clingy definitely brings out the runner. And if I switched and pulled away, you definitely wouldn't take you long to be like, hey. Hey. <laughs> Okay. And speaking of clinging, yes. this this is actually this the is reason. the inspiration right yeah. here. This is the inspiration. So for this. the last few videos, Sophie has been just very we we called needy. her needy, but Shannon actually said that's not very nice of us to say because needy feels like if oh, you're so needy. But you know what? I'm trying to coin that word into something different because I feel like people see needy as a dirty word, and I, what I said was needy's not a dirty word. Like having needs is not bad, right? It sounds like, oh, you're needy, but you know mm -hmm. what? I'm proud of Soph. She needs TLC today, and she has let us know that right. all day. Well, That's you, healthy. You had said when you first met Sophie that, um, that she was a great lesson for me because she has no problem telling you her needs mm -hmm. and getting them met. Yes. You know? Yeah. So she needs to be loved. She needs to be petted. She comes right up here and says, and gets in your face yes. and is like, you're going to pet me. Yes. yes. <laughs> she know? was sitting on my lap and she literally put her head on my chest. Like mm -hmm. she has no problem being like, I actually need to be closer than on your lap. And that triggers me sometimes. Yes. I'm like, oh, like, can I just be by myself for five seconds? <laughs> right. <laughs> So what is that from? So that brought up me wanting to kind of make a segment around Sophie, as silly mm -hmm. as it sounds, because what do many of us have? Many of us have pets. Many of us have cats and dogs mm -hmm. and children, <laughs> pets of a form, right, right. that test this theory. So the wounding, this comes from the Imago theory that we can get wounded in our childhoods. Mm -hmm. And so the wound technically is abandonment. So you can be abandoned at any age of your life, but you know, when you're a child, so say like during attachment is really profound. So zero to two is like when the baby attaches, you know, you're holding the baby all the time, you're nursing the baby, you're feeding the baby, you're snuggling the baby, and the baby feels attached. Well, what if you're a drug addict? You're like, I don't want to feed the baby, right? Mm -hmm. Or what if, God forbid, I know people who their parent, their mom has died right after childbirth, mm -hmm. or they've gone into um, like or my son. Went, well, no, they've gone into um, like the baby's gone into foster care sometimes, mm -hmm. or like my son went into NICU having struggles. So mm -hmm. sometimes there's that separation when that attachment doesn't occur right away, or that bonding doesn't occur, mm -hmm. and there's an abandonment, or the family member dies. So you can have abandonment issues from that young. Oh my goodness, yes. Really. And here's what's so fascinating. And I'll so you would never, but you would never know that as an adult, like right? Because aren't you, if you're having abandonment issues and you're thinking I wasn't abandoned. So this is a fun story. So this is how this works. So when I was pregnant with my son, who turned 17 on Thursday, Aww, so this is birthday, appropriate Troy. to show the story. <laughs> right. And he actually was born on a Thursday, and his birthday was a Thursday this year, so that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. But when I was pregnant with him, I had multiple issues, and I went on bed rest. Mm -hmm. My daughter, up until that point, was what I would call securely attached. They are 22 months apart. Oh, okay? okay. So she was what I would call securely attached. I would take her to my mom's, drop her off, she'd go, bye, mom. And that was right. it. She didn't care. I'd be like, bye, honey. She's like, yeah, bye. Peace out. Peace right. out. I'm good. <laughs> right. I know you're coming back. Like, we're good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, at my son's baby shower, I went into labor. I was eight weeks. I was 30 weeks uh -huh. and went into labor. So I went to the hospital, left right. my daughter, and she knew mommy wasn't feeling well. Mm -hmm. And then I went on bed rest for six and a half weeks. He was born three and a half weeks early. 
So she basically lost her mom that day. I was on bed rest. I was in and out of the hospital. I was in and out mm -hmm. of the doctor's office. Somebody had to help with her. My mm -hmm. aunt moved in and took care of her. My ex was, you know, taking care of her, but mommy was not very available. Mommy was cooking the baby. Mommy was sick. Mommy was sleeping. Mommy mm -hmm. was on bed rest. So she couldn't, you know, she was 22 months. She was moving right. fast. And so she couldn't really connect with me. Mm -hmm. From that moment, she received an abandonment wound. Mommy was gone. I went into the hospital for six days. She didn't like the hospital. The hospital yeah. scared her. So she didn't see mommy for six days. So mommy who had been with her, took her to work with me. We were so bonded, disappeared. Yeah. She received an abandonment wound. She's 22 months. What does she know about abandonment? Right. However, interesting story. So when it happened, being studying Imago, I said to myself, uh-oh, mm -hmm. my daughter just got an abandonment wound. She's going to react one of two ways. She's either going to decide that people abandon you, mm -hmm. don't get too close, keep your distance, mm -hmm. which is people that are runners. Mm -hmm. Then the other option is, oh gosh, what if someone leaves me again that I love? Let Plain. me cling on and make sure they don't leave me. And being my daughter, I was pretty sure she was going to be a clinger. <laughs> right. So I watched for years. Mm -hmm. I watched. And she did change right away. She was like, mommy, when are you coming back? Mommy, when are you going? Right. I don't want to go to Gaga. Like she was just like afraid to be away from mommy mm -hmm. for a while. So she, she got the wound. Mm -hmm. She pulled out of it and went on to school, whatever. She came to me one day and said something. It was something in regards to how she felt with friends. They had split, they had parted ways of schools. Mm -hmm. So the friends were in school, they were besties, they were together every day, but then when they went to middle school, they went to different schools. Right. And she was trying to reconnect with this best friend from elementary school. And she would call and then it would go to voicemail. Or she would call and the friend wouldn't call her back. And she was literally getting like that clingy, spinning, clingy, like spinning yeah. and like, oh, is she never gonna call me? And she was like spinning. Mm -hmm. Please don't kill me for sharing all this. <laughs> Um, and, and it was so profound and she just didn't know what was happening to mm -hmm. her. And she was like, and she didn't know, she was like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. And she was all, and she was in so much pain, pain. and she couldn't figure out why she why? was in so much pain. Yeah. And I sat her down and I said, Oh honey, I have waited for this day. Right. You have an abandonment wound. It's my fault. I abandoned you with Troy. Didn't mean to, mm -hmm. but here's what happened. And so your abandonment wounds getting triggered mm -hmm. and causing you to cling and feel terrified and feel possessive and all these horrible things she was feeling. It was the single greatest moment of our lives mm -hmm. because she got well, it. Everyone needs a mom as a therapist. I mean, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> there are many bad moments, but this one was a good moment. But that moment, she got it. Right. She got it. She started crying. She felt it. She mm -hmm. it like it came back up from her mm -hmm. when she was two, and she was like, oh, "That's what it is. is." And she was so clear about it, and and it was so beautiful for her because what it helped her to realize is you're not really losing your friend. Mm -hmm. And see, that's the thing with these triggers is you feel like you're being abandoned and then you do all these behaviors, but it's not necessarily real. It's connecting to a wound for you back there. Right. I can feel abandoned if my husband, you know, like if I'm calling and calling and he doesn't answer, that can trigger an old wound for me. It doesn't mean he's doing anything wrong other than working. Right. Right. It doesn't mean anything, but it can bring it up for me. So when we are conscious of our wounding, mm -hmm. Because then, of course, what has to happen is the clinger, the needy, mm. the reason we get a bad rap is that we smother people, yes. right? So if I, like, leave here today and call you five times and, like, mm. try to get reconnected, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I yeah. love you, but right. I can't breathe. So knowing that we have this abandonment wound and that our adaptation is that we become clingy, we now have to learn to self-soothe. So that moment was transformative for my daughter to recognize I need to take care of this little 22 month old mm -hmm. inside of me who's freaking, freaking out, out and thinking she's gonna lose everyone and calm her down and say, you know what? This person's not abandoning me. They've gone to a different school. Right. They're busy. We can do a play date. We can do a sleepover. We'll reconnect. I haven't lost them. I'm right. just, we're adjusting. I'm missing them, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But it comes up for her. Yeah. Very powerfully. It's even coming up right now being away from her college roommate, actually, mm -hmm. I just realized. Yeah. Because they're together every day and now they're separated from each other and there's not a lot of contact. So that that when we have these wounds, mm -hmm. it's it's not her fault, it's not our fault. It it happens to us, but then we adapt to it, mm -hmm. we get scared, we 
get clingy, we want to connect. And so what we have to do is learn to self-soothe, not reach out so much. Like if I'm feeling clingy with someone and I want to call them five times, you don't allow yourself to call five times. Sometimes it's a matter of sitting down, closing your eyes, going inside and kind of connecting with that 22 month old or that five year old that's like <gasps> frantic and right. self soothing, right? right? Animals are great for this. <laughs> the, the thing that Sophie brought up for me is, so I'm talking about the abandonment wound and reacting with neediness, but the other reaction is the runner. Yeah. So your growth opportunity is that you've got the same little kid inside of you right. who says, oh my God, if I let you too close, you're going to suck the life out of me. Right. Like, or you're going to suck and the life out of me. is that from the death of my brother, you think? Or is that from something else? <sighs> the death of your brother is perfect. So the death of your brother is an ultimate abandonment. Right. And in that time, you probably decided, I love this kid with all my heart. He was everything to me. And if I love something with if I love something with all my heart, it will go away mm -hmm. and I will lose it and I will not be able to deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. So I will not get that close again. again. And so anytime that we're really intimate or that I feel scared, a lot of times it happens with runners where things are really close and then the person has to go back out of town or something and then they're like, oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna feel this. Right. And then they just pull all the way back. Right. So animals are great because you having a smother wound and deciding you don't want to get too close, mm -hmm. an animal will force you yes. to deal with that smothered feeling and step up because you don't, it's not healthy for you to do that push away thing. Right. It's healthy for you to learn to tolerate the fear. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you can't have close relationships. Yeah. I mean, I even do this with girlfriends. Like my one girlfriend, Tina, she's really, you know, she's really, she, she calls me, she, you know, and she's one of those people that like, she's she always, wants to be she wants to be connected. Yes. And I'm very like, okay, don't call you back for a few days. And she's very forgiving with yes. my runner. <laughs> right, right. Um, but she knows you, you know, love her. but yeah, but she has been a great lesson for me in realizing that you can't just completely, you know, abandon, abandon people. Yeah. And she has abandonment issues because her dad left when she was young. Yes. So she has that, right. that clinger yes. side of her. Yes. Um, and so that's why we're friends right? Same with you and I. Yes. That's the why Amago. we're friends. Yes. Right. The Amago. Correct. So that's very interesting. And so the reason just to kind of flush this out full circle, the reason that the Amago exists, the reason that we choose people is that I am too far over here with mm -hmm. my clinging mm -hmm. and you will be too far over here with your running. Mm -hmm. And by my clinginess, I'm going to kind of force you. you to come step up right. and you're going to force me to step up because you might say to me someday, Hey, I know you get anxious, but you can't do a, B and C. Like it's too much pressure for me. Right. I mean, I've come a long way, so I don't think I'm ever going to drive you to that. But right. like, that's what happens in relationship is one person will say, Hey, I, you know, I love you, but you've mm -hmm. called me nine times today. Like give me a few hours to respond or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the other person will vice versa. So we'll make each other have to shift and heal mm -hmm. so that we're not staying in the extremes. And that's why the Imago says we're attracted to each other because I'm healthier, not clinging to people right. and you're healthier, not, not running so away. far. Right. Right. So this is how this works. So, um, so with animals, you are forced. So for those of you that have the clingy, whiny cat that meows all the time, God bless you. I'm praying for you because even that one pushes me over the edge. But that's the thing is like, don't get rid of it. Lean in. Learn how to give that cat or dog what it needs. Yes. And you're actually going to be dealing with some of your smothering and some, your smother, you know, feeling smothered and your runner because you're learning to meet another human being's needs without feeling like, you know, they're, they're going to die. Like if I get right. this close to this, they're going to die. So Sophie was leave. brought to me for a reason. Is Absolutely. What you're saying. <laughs> and I've seen this. It sounds so, I realize I sound ridiculous, but I have seen this with clients and people in my life where it's like, they're supposed to learn this and then they don't get into relationships or whatever. And then they get into a relationship with an animal that That's they so have to, needy. it's the same thing right. or children. I am like a fiercely independent like was an only child and was fiercely independent growing up. Even though I'm a clinger, I have a very fiercely, like don't cling on me, I will run right. from you, right? right? Same thing. Right. And then you have children that will be the opposite of what yeah. you are and you will have to step up. Yes. It's so, so you true. will learn like my this daughter lesson. is a total clinger. Yeah, and you'll learn the lesson. She wants to be right next to me all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's 
that was really hard for me. Sure. And then you know, you even like in bed, like I don't want anyone too close to me. It's like, okay, can we just like, <laughs> you go on the other side or on the couch, like too close, yeah. you know? And so ironically, Hannah did not want me near her. She was, wow. she was like, no mommy, I go, I go. She wanted to run. She wanted to go. She wanted to do, she's hyperactive as a baby. Right. She did not want to snuggle at all. <laughs> and you're like, I just want to snuggle. And I just want to <laughs> hold you. You're my baby to love. You know, it's right. like, oh my gosh. She just was like, as soon as she could walk and talk at nine months, she was like, mommy, I Isn't that I go. crazy how yeah. you're given what you need to learn? Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Yep. And being able to let her go. Right. Then I had Troy who was happy to sit on my lap for five years. Right. You know what I mean? It's interesting, but it's, yeah. It's and my son's like me. He like, doesn't, yeah. don't touch me. Yeah, like, good. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you want a hug? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is so interesting. Now it's becoming her therapy session, but this is so interesting because you said you love touch. Yes, I do. I love touch. It's fascinating. Yes. So I don't know. This is interesting. But in my marriage, I was the clinger. He was the runner. Yes. And you were the clinger because you felt his separateness. Yeah. And so this is fascinating. A lot of it, the core, remember the wound is abandonment. Right. The clinging and the running is the adaptation to the abandonment. So those of us that feel abandonment will do one of the two, depending on who we hook up with. Right. right. If you're dating somebody, if I'm dating somebody clingy and I have, not naming any names, <laughs> but I was constantly like this and constantly right. like, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Like I'm good. I'm not dead. Like stop right. calling, you know, because we will take on that because the core is the abandonment. So if you smother me and you make me feel like if you're clinging, I'm going to do this right. and vice versa. So it's, it's very interesting. So lean into whatever you are. The, lean the into the opposite because right. you're probably out of, you're out of balance. If you have someone in your life who's over here and you're over here, then you're out you're of balance. balance. Because yeah. if you're in balance, you'll pick somebody who's more here. It's interesting. Right. My husband and I are like pretty close. Like we yeah. don't, yeah, we don't, I mean, we, we've learned this and we've studied it and mm -hmm. everything. So I know I was at times more clinging in the beginning and then mm -hmm. he can have moments where he does that, but we're pretty in balance. Like if we're both good, mm -hmm. we're pretty in balance. You know, it's interesting, yeah. but that was from lots of work. Yeah, to. you have to get there because yes. I'm, you know, I'm in a relationship right now where it, it was, he was a little more clingy and I'm, ooh, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden I think we've gotten to that point where he now stepped we're, back, right, and where you we're stepped able in. to say, yeah. okay, you know, yeah, when and he when was I, able to stand still, you were able to come back in, right, and step towards him, right, and I bet there was even times where he's too still and you come, yeah, forward. and I'm like, hello, yeah, <laughs> why aren't you holding my hand right now? <laughs> It, it is fascinating. It is. If you're curious about this. Because you can this, flip like that. The fact that you can flip, you yeah. know, where you're like the runner and then all of a sudden you're like, why aren't they running? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm the runner. The one that's running. <laughs> it is so yeah. true. And this is all from Imago theory, which is the Harville Hendrix getting the love you want, which is right. all the base for this. Yeah. It's fascinating. That's you know, a it's book so true. That mm -hmm. you didn't read. <laughs> I had to study that and test it on it and oh, study that so for Oh, so she did years. read that Excuse one. Me. No, <laughs> that is good. That's good. All right. Well, if you have any show topics that you'd like us to talk yes. about, please, please, please comment if you have any uh, questions about uh, running or clinging. No. Um, and don't forget, we are on YouTube, so make sure you go and subscribe to our channel. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're also on podcast now. So if you're Yay! driving in your car and you just want to listen to some of our older episodes, go check them out. Um, and I haven't told you this, but I think what I want to do is start doing some like 10 minute podcasts that we can do, oh, fun. which are a little shorter for people because I don't know if everyone has 20 minutes, a half an hour to listen. Yeah. So I think pretty soon we're going to start doing those when we have some free time. Yes. Because we have now have the attention span of a gnat. <laughs> Now we'll see cell phones. So we'll do a three we minute podcast. We both have a lot podcast. going on in our lives. Yeah. And once we get to a place where we don't, don't aren't going to be as crazy, we're going to try and get some, uh, some like shorter it. podcasts on the air. I like it. Sounds All good. right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. And, and love your animal. Sophie. Love your animal. <laughs> now They're she's there like, for a reason. She's like, yes, this is what I've always, always wanted. wanted. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.